what I've realized is that many people in Africa don't yet understand how the world works. It's a race for resources, and capitalism is about captivating and capturing resources in order to build monopolies. And so what we saw with Cisco Steel was sabotage of mm. Cisco Steel by monopoly makers. And these monopoly makers were companies like uh, um, um, Anglo America, um, ISCO of South Africa, um, Lancaster Steel, and Voost Alpine that was manufacturing the machines that were used in smelting iron and steel in Zimbabwe. Now, Zisco Steel is in many ways very similar to ESCOM. Zisco Steel was the biggest steel and iron manufacturer in the Southern Hemisphere, the biggest in Africa, the biggest in Brazil, Australia. And what the problem was, was when we got independence, the Western world was not happy to bestow an African country with the ability to produce iron and the ability to sophisticate iron and to create military hardware and industrial hardware that would have industrialized uh, Zimbabwe or Africa. The reason being, once the Second World War ended, there was a plan called the uh, Morgenthau Plan. The Morgenthau Plan was supposed to deindustrialize Japan and Germany so that they would never rise to become superpowers that would challenge the Western world or the Western banking system. So what they did is they wanted to turn them into agrarian societies, take out their industry, block their mines, take their workers that were most technical and take them out of Germany and out of Japan so that these countries could never rise to industrialize. Eventually what happened is Germany's lack of development, Japan's lack of development made it difficult for the West to compete with Russia. It made it difficult for the West to compete with Russia, which was now bringing communism. So they were forced to allow Germany and Japan to develop so that Western capitalism could show as an example in these regions as a success. But for this Western capitalism to take place, for the Marshall Plan to be given to these Western countries to rise themselves up, they needed cheap resources. Mm. So what did they have to do? They had to keep... They had to now take the Morgenthau Plan, this underdevelopment plan, this agrarian society plan to Africa. And so that meant that they had to deindustrialize African countries that had just come out of colonialism to ensure that they'll never be able to sophisticate their resources so that those resources will be passed so, on. So, so keep African countries Absolutely. sort of under your thumb Correct. so that you can use them to your benefit. And this is exactly what's happening here in South Africa with ESCOM. Because you have to understand that ESCOM itself was created by a private monopoly that was led by um, um, the, um, what you call it, the um, 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 Cecil John Rhodes' company, the British South Africa uh, company. And it created ESCOM as private entities initially, where they were providing uh, electricity to a lot of the mining industries. And with the biggest mining industry in the world in South Africa, you quickly developed the biggest electricity uh, supplier in the world. So what they realize is that if you want to be the biggest electricity supplier, you have to consolidate all these small electricity suppliers and make one electricity supplier, which became the Victoria Falls Power uh, Supply Company that was owned by Cecil John Rhodes. And if you remember, all British South Africa companies were then taken by Anglo-America. Mm. Anglo-America is the same one that we see having a problem in Zisco Steel. So Anglo-America becomes this agent of un sabotaging Africa to ensure that it doesn't industrialize and to keep the industrialization capacity mm. in areas controlled by whites, which is why it lasted in apartheid South Africa. So how